Three workers discovered an ancient well in the sewer. Driven by intense curiosity, they opened the manhole cover only to find it overrun with tree roots. One of the men shouted loudly, but the only response was a pale-skinned creature. By the time Ichabod and Abby arrived in response to the alert, only the workers' equipment remained at the scene. Abby, using radar, detected that the structure beneath the manhole cover was fortress-like, with an octagonal dome style typically built only 200 years ago. Abby then discovered a cell phone nearby. The video footage on the phone showed that the three workers were dragged into the well by a creature. Ichabod and Abby then opened the cover. Once inside, Abby tried to contact the workers using a walkie-talkie. Fortunately, they were still alive. However, their conversation attracted the creatures inside the fortress. As more creatures emerged from the tunnels, Ichabod and Abby were forced to retreat from the area. To understand what these creatures were, they began to research related materials. They learned that the octagonal fortress was known as a shrine. Built by someone named Jefferson, the purpose of the shrine was to store important secrets. Originally, to prevent the loss of information in the shrine, Jefferson summoned soulless individuals to guard the chamber. Ichabod believed these monsters were the shrine's guards, who had entered a state of hibernation due to prolonged darkness, thus surviving through mutation until now. Their sudden awakening was likely due to hunger. By this time, one of the workers had been killed by the creatures, while the other two hid in a cave high above, afraid to make a sound, to quickly rescue the workers. Ichabod and Abby returned to the entrance of the shrine. First, they used the camera's flash to disperse the surrounding monsters. Then they seized the opportunity to enter the shrine's secret chamber. But upon entering, Ichabod saw a familiar face. It was Jefferson the builder of the shrine from 200 years ago. Ichabod was puzzled as to how he could be there. Jefferson explained that he was only a projection now. Originally, when building the place, he knew the shrine needed substantial energy support. So he designed a cube that harnessed supernatural powers. Although Jefferson was now a projection, his memories and personality remained the same as before. Ichabod then explained their purpose for coming. He hoped Jefferson could help rescue the trapped workers. However, Jefferson said he was powerless to assist. He was there only to guard the information, and the monsters were not under anyone's control. While Ichabod was talking with Jefferson, Abby accidentally discovered the wires connected to the projection. She followed the wires directly to a secret room, where a glowing cube was surrounded by several sleeping monsters. Abby carefully inspected the room and soon found the two surviving workers. After making a quiet gesture to the workers, Abby immediately reported what she saw to Ichabod. Then Abby and Ichabod made their way to the chamber, inching closer to the two workers. After Ichabod brought the workers down from their hiding spot, they prepared to exit the way they had come. But just then, a monster suddenly woke up, and soon all the surrounding monsters rose from the ground. Get to the ladder. In the last moment, they managed to close the manhole cover. Although they had rescued the two trapped workers, the creatures below were too dangerous. They had to be completely destroyed. Ichabod asked Abby to take the workers back to the surface for treatment. While he returned to the shrine, after dealing with a few scattered monsters, Ichabod installed a time bomb inside. Before he left, Ichabod said goodbye to Jefferson with the highest of courtesies. <laughs> To create a powerful coven of witches, Henry chanted a spell and rang the Liberty Bell. However, due to his impure bloodline, the descendants of the witches were only temporarily affected. Seeing that he could not awaken their bloodline by himself Henry thought of his mother Katrina. Katrina was practicing blood magic at the time. Since her disagreement with Ichabod, Katrina's mindset had gradually shifted. Henry's sudden appearance surprised Katrina greatly. She had assumed her son had vanished along with Moloch, only to see him return unharmed. Henry took Katrina to his residence, seeing green plants all around the place. Katrina felt very reassured. At this moment, Henry pulled out a large magic book from a cabinet. This book contained the most powerful magic in the world, and whoever possessed it could destroy anything. Henry expressed his weariness of killing. He wanted to gather all the wizard families and form a strong witch army, so future generations of wizards would not be discriminated against. However, to awaken the bloodline of wizard descendants, a pure-blooded witch was needed to use the book. Henry wanted Katrina to join him in this endeavor, and they would lead the witch army together. Henry passionately painted a picture of a beautiful life, quickly brainwashing Katrina into deciding to help him. Meanwhile, 
Ichabod and Abby were still investigating the cause of the people's control. Since they all heard the bell ring before losing consciousness, they headed to the center of the town. A liberty bell had always been placed there. According to records, this bell had a certain connection to witches, with each symbol on it representing a ritual. Sleepy Hollow was a gathering place for witch descendants, and it was likely that someone wanted to awaken their lineage, to prevent the townspeople from all becoming witches. Ichabod and Abby planned to completely destroy the Liberty Bell, but as they were struggling to move the Liberty Bell, Henry arrived, arm in arm with his mother, Katrina's expression was calm, devoid of any emotion, Ichabod thought that Henry had taken her hostage, but Katrina simply said that she had volunteered, Henry's brainwashing had made Katrina completely abandon Ichabod, thus, the family of three now stood on opposing sides, Ichabod tried to persuade Katrina to come back to him, but Katrina's response was an attack, as Ichabod and Abby dodged, they jumped into a tunnel, and before they could react, Henry used magic to seal them inside. Subsequently, Henry and Katrina took the Liberty Bell to the former gathering place of the Witch Coven. Excited by the thought of awakening the Witch descendants, they were both very excited. But just then, gunshots rang out from outside. Ichabod, who had escaped, was furiously taunting them. Seeing this, Henry went outside alone, and at the same time, Abby positioned herself behind Henry. Facing his son who opposed him at every turn, Ichabod raised his gun and pulled the trigger, but Henry easily blocked the bullet. Seeing this, Abby quickly started the car, intending to ram Henry, but Katrina, who had arrived in time, stopped her. Katrina used magic to blast the car into pieces, with Ichabod looking on anxiously at the side. But when Henry approached to check, he realized that Abby was not inside the car. Instantly, he thought of the Liberty Bell inside the house. At that moment, Abby was placing explosives next to the Liberty Bell, and just as she was about to light it, Henry rushed back in time and knocked her aside with a wave of his hand. Then, Ichabod and Abby were tied to a post by Henry, but they secretly discussed a new plan. Ichabod told Abby that he had two flintlock pistols in his pocket, and if they could hit the gunpowder on the Liberty Bell, it would explode. While Henry and Katrina were still chanting spells, Ichabod and Abby used blades to cut the ropes on their hands. When Abby took Ichabod's flintlock pistols, they immediately sprang into action. Finish our work. It's too late for that. The coven means nothing without you, Henry. Not Henry. The name you chose. Most Jerry. I'm sorry it had to end like this. He was a man. Take him from all and all. I shall not see his like again. The death of her son enraged Katrina immensely. She pinned Ichabod against the wall and then picked up the large magic book from the table, beginning to chant a spell. Soon, a temporal tunnel appeared. Katrina intended to travel back in time to change history, and Abby, determined to stop her, followed her into the temporal tunnel. When they woke up again, they found themselves on a battlefield in the year 1781. Katrina immediately sought out the Headless Horseman, who had not yet been beheaded. Knowing that the Headless Horseman was also searching for Ichabod, she offered to cooperate. Using the magic book in her possession, Katrina could pinpoint Ichabod's location. Seeing Katrina's sincerity, the Headless Horseman agreed to collaborate with her. Meanwhile, Abby had been captured by a group of soldiers who, due to her modern clothing, thought she was a mentally ill person, to prove her identity. Abby mentioned Ichabod's name and claimed to know information about the Horseman of the Apocalypse. The soldiers called Ichabod over, but when they met, he did not recognize the woman in front of him. This was their first encounter. 200 years in the future, Abby told Ichabod that she knew the outcome of the war. The Horseman of the Apocalypse's head will be severed by you, and you too will be resurrected 200 years later, she said. This statement puzzled Ichabod. It was not until a soldier brought news from the battlefield and Abby correctly relayed the content that Ichabod began to show some interest in her. Then they arrived at the battlefield, where the sight of soldiers' decapitated bodies sent Ichabod into a state of panic. If Abby hadn't called him back urgently, he might have been decapitated as well. To prevent Katrina from using the night to alter history, Abby suggested seeking help from Benjamin, who could guide them on what to do next. Ichabod then took Abby to Benjamin's residence. However, when Benjamin saw Abby, he was not surprised. Instead, 
He asked her about the world 200 years in the future. After Abby shared some interesting stories, she quickly stated the purpose of their visit. Upon learning that they had traveled through time using the great magic book, Benjamin thought of a way to reverse the spellcaster's magic. The only means to erase all the events that had occurred there, the only one capable of doing this was Abby's ancestor, Grace who had spent years studying spells and was very knowledgeable about them, just as they were preparing to act. The headless horseman, wielding a battle axe, found them. Ichabod drew his sword and engaged in combat with him. Seeing this, Benjamin quickly pulled out a bomb, but before he could throw it, the headless horseman chopped off his head with an axe. Just as headless horseman stepped forward to pull out the axe from the wall, the falling bomb exploded, instantly turning the room into a mess. Seeing Benjamin's body on the ground, an enraged Ichabod was about to charge at the headless horseman but was stopped by Abby. They then returned to the military camp. Ichabod blamed Abby for Benjamin's death, believing that everything was a scheme of hers. He thought she used his trust to find Benjamin, and then deliberately led the headless horseman there. Seeing Ichabod's growing misunderstanding, Abby, in desperation, revealed that Katrina was a witch and had formed an alliance with the headless horseman. Katrina's goal was to completely eliminate them because only they could reverse the current situation, but at that moment, Ichabod was not willing to listen to any explanations. Just as Ichabod was about to leave, Abby suddenly remembered her cell phone. She loudly told Ichabod, I have an item, a black rectangle, that contains our photo together from 200 years in the future, the password is your birthday. Ichabod ignored her and left. When Ichabod got home, he noticed Katrina's strange behavior, and the table was covered with various herbs. Just as Ichabod was about to inquire about the purpose of these items, Katrina, using magic, controlled a dagger and aimed it at Ichabod. Fortunately, a soldier arrived just in time to interrupt their conversation. New developments on the battlefield required Ichabod to go and discuss the situation. Before leaving, Ichabod saw the great magic book on the table, combining what Abby had just said. He immediately went to the storeroom. In Abby's belongings, he indeed found a black rectangle after entering his birthday on it. A video from the phone immediately played before Ichabod. The content was a conversation between him and Abby 200 years later, and at that moment, he finally completely believed Abby. When Ichabod anxiously arrived at the cell, Abby had already handled the immediate trouble. They then went together to Grace's residence. Grace, being a witch, immediately recognized Abby's identity. Knowing they came to reverse the spell, Grace quickly prepared the materials to break the spell. But soon the headless horseman arrived on his warhorse. Katrina used the magic book to break the barrier at the door. To buy them enough time, Ichabod alone confronted the headless horseman who had charged in. Just as Ichabod was about to be defeated, the witchcraft inside the house reached its final step. As Grace threw out the herbs in her hand, everything around them suddenly came to a standstill. Then, the timeline began to rapidly rewind, and before long, they returned from 1781 to the place before they had time traveled. The returned Katrina was furiously angry and immediately used magic intending to kill Abby. Katrina's eyes were blinded by the hatred in her heart. Seeing this, Ichabod rushed forward, knocked the magic book out of Katrina's hands, and then stabbed her to death in his arms. 